The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the button operation of the FS10A. Hi, my name is Sam Kresh. I'm the manager of the Industrial OEM Division at Fluid Components International. The FS10A is a flow monitor designed specifically for analyzers and sampling systems. It comes with a convenient PC interface. However, notebook computers are not always available in the field. The button operation is accessible at all times and may be accessed during the process. Up to 15 functions can be accessed using the buttons. Normally, only a handful are, are required for a quick setup, the most important being the zero and span setting, as well as the trip point. Let's demonstrate how to access the buttons and set the zero, the span, and the trip point. It's first important to note that there are three levels for the buttons. The first is the normal operating level that we're in right now. Then entering into the function select mode would be level two, and then actually performing the function would be level three. So let's access the function select mode. It just happens that the zero setting is at function number six, so let's demonstrate how to get to number six. First step is to hold both buttons down for a minimum of three seconds and monitor the LEDs for an acknowledgement that we've entered and changed modes. Okay, you saw all the LEDs flash momentarily and the first LED is flashing. That, that's an indication that we are now at function number one. So in the case of setting the zero and span, the zero is function, happens to be function number six. So we wish to climb to the number six function as indicated by which LEDs, or the number of LEDs flashing from left to right. So right now I'm at function number three. By simply depressing the plus or minus button, I can sequence to the appropriate function. So now I'm at five. And now I'm at six. So I'm at function six. That happens to be the zero setting function. But in order to access that, or to provide an action on that, I need to enter into that function. And to do that, I can hold either button for a minimum of three seconds and wait for the acknowledgement. And we see every other LED flashing now. That's an indication that I am in a capture mode. So I am now in a zero capture mode. In order to set the zero, we always wish to turn the valve all the way off. In the case of a liquid application, we want to make certain that our line is completely full of liquid. Let it stabilize for 30 seconds to a minute, and then we will capture our zero. So right now we have no flow, and we simply capture the zero by depressing either the, the negative or plus button momentarily. And now we, we receive an acknowledgement that the leftmost LED is flashing indicating we just captured our zero. Now we're still in function six. We wish to exit function six and enter into function seven, which happens to be our span. In order to do that, we hold either button for a minimum of three seconds and wait for the acknowledgement. Okay, we noticed all the flashing and now the LEDs are, or, or the first seven LEDs are now flashing sequence from the sixth to the seventh upon exit of number six, and we are at function number seven. Okay. At this point, we wish to enter into function number seven, being the span mode. We do the same thing as we did for zero. We hold either button for three seconds and wait for the acknowledgement. And there we have our capture mode acknowledgement, and now we're ready to set the span. At this point, we open our valve to a position that we wish to set or capture the full span of the flow. Again, we would like the unit to stabilize. Uh, give it 30 seconds to a minute. Make sure it reaches equilibrium. And at that point, we can then capture by depressing either button momentarily and looking for the acknowledgement, and in this case, the far most LED is flashing, indicating we've just captured our span. Now we'll come out of function number seven, 
by holding either button for three seconds and waiting for the acknowledgement. As you can see, it stepped to the number eight function, but we're not interested in entering eight. We now want to set our trip point. So let's go back to number one, where we can set a trip point based on a percentage of the button's 10% increment. We could also capture a trip point at function number two if we wished. And there we are at function number one. Let's enter function number one now by holding either button for three seconds and waiting for the acknowledgement. Okay, and you notice that the LED began blinking quickly. We are in function number one and we happen to be at the 10% setting. We can increment up to set the precise 10% setting that we wish. In this case we move to the 30% mark. Let's set our low flow trip point at 30%. We hold either button down to exit and now we are again in the function select mode we went from function one to function two, but we've completed our setup. So at this point, we wish to exit and enter into the normal operating mode. In order to do that, we hold both buttons down, just as we did to enter into the function mode. We hold both buttons down to exit, and now we are in normal operating mode. You can see our trip point is flashing at the 30% mark. and it's flashing quickly, indicating that we are in alarm position. As we flowed through the set point, the LED began to blink slowly, indicating a normal flow, or, or that we are not in an alarm setting. And, it, um, and if we looked at our relay contacts, or the relay coil, we would see that we are in the energized position right now. Thank you for using FCI products. Please refer to the manual for information on additional button functions. The manual and further technical downloads are available on the FCI website at www.fluidcomponents.com.